Welcome back, everybody. I did end up getting some good news from Sonics. Well, I, I don't know if it's good news, but uh, they're definitely willing to help me, uh, and that's good news. So, basically, uh, first they suggested, you know, how to drill it out and just put the gears in. And I said I wasn't exactly comfortable with that because... Uh, well, I'm concerned about the structural integrity of the plane. I'm sure they wouldn't have suggested it if it wouldn't have been adequate or, or more than adequate. But um, some of the holes that would have needed to be uh, drilled out through the uh, support angle for the, I mean, the spar tunnel uh, would not line up correctly with the uh, landing gear mounts. So that means... Well, at a minimum, I would have been drilling out a number of rivets that weren't going to get replaced. Um, and I would have also had to drill new holes relatively close to where some of the old holes were. And, uh, you know, it would have been reducing material in what I consider to be pretty important areas. And I just didn't like that idea. Um, so... I had a radical idea of asking them to, uh, about possibly asking them to swap gear with me and just getting the standard tail dragger gear for this aircraft, even though I don't have a great interest in having a tail dragger. At that point, I probably would have considered selling the project. And that didn't make a lot of sense because in order to get into a similar project, I would have ended up spending probably double what I would have gotten back for this aircraft. So it was it didn't make sense. It wasn't logical. So the what we came up with was uh, Carrie got Chris involved and got Mark involved. And Chris basically got it down to me replacing four components. I'll show you those in a minute. So I got to replace four components and reuse a few components. And uh, then this will be as it should have been in the first place. Uh, slightly disappointed in the back of my mind that, you know, it was an error on the part of the factory. And there's a little part of my brain that says, well, they should just take care of all of it. But at the same time, it's been five years and you really just can't go back and, and, and expect uh, too much that late in the game, especially me being the second owner of this, this kit now. Uh, Either way, not a problem. The, uh, Mark agreed to give me a very, very, very healthy discount on the parts that need to be uh, replaced. And then it's just a matter of my time involved. And I, once again, I'm going to learn more from this experience. So that is rewarding in itself, I guess. Um, I, I want to know more. I want to know as, as much as I can. Uh, about the aircraft, uh, which is a little counterintuitive because the reason for me seeking out a quick build kit to begin with was that the factory was going to have done the majority of the major structural components, and they still have at this point. Um, but as I work on the aircraft more, I'm becoming more comfortable with its construction and... If you would have asked me week one if I would have been willing to do this, take these parts out, replace them, and feel comfortable with that, no way in hell would I have considered that. But now that I've, you know, I haven't done a lot, but what I've done is I have drilled some rivets, I have replaced some components, I have, I've gotten some work done, and I understand the mechanics behind it now, and I'm fairly comfortable with it, and I'm sure I'll get more comfortable with it as time goes on. So it's just four parts, right? How hard could it be? Okay, let me show you exactly what needs to be done. I got another camera set up down here and we're gonna to swap to that view. So the main components that need to be changed are going to be this, uh, it's like an L bracket piece right here. Uh, it's the, obviously you can tell by all the rivets going across that is the, uh, the strengthening backbone of this spar tunnel. And 
So that needs to be replaced because a number of these rivets are not going to be here. And a couple need to be replaced with some bolts here and here. Um, and this sheet metal angle here needs to be replaced because that's going to be missing uh, a lot of components uh, in this region here, just as the, uh, the angle bracket would have. And then other than that, there's a L bracket of thick aluminum here, about an eighth inch angle uh, here that needs to be replaced because the holes are going to be slightly different to mount the angles from the mounts. So this one, and then way over here on this side, I think you can see this one in the picture a little bit better here. Um, sort of a strange shape. And um, so these two components here gotta be replaced, thick angle items. This large angle item and this sheet item with the angles bent in it. And uh, that is a lot of rivets to remove. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that. Uh, I think with my little uh, angle to drill, I have some pretty short bits for that. I think I can reach in the spar tunnel and drill out the majority of those rivets in the tunnel. Uh, maybe put a little vice grips on the back ends of the, uh, uh, the tails of the rivets here. so so that nothing spins. Well, technically, I, I, I'm not worried about things spinning now that I think about it. Um, I only need to drill out the rivets. Uh, let me move the camera. I don't know if you can see here. Okay, no, you can see here. Uh, let me change the angle a little bit anyway. <clears throat> okay. The more I think about it, I just need to drill out where I do not need to separate this component from this component. I just need to drill out these rivets here and the same with the other center bracket away from this sheet metal rib. I need to remove all of these lower rivets coming from the bottom skin. Uh, to be careful not to oversize or get those to spin uh, so the foreskin can be reused. And then uh, I need to remove rivets that attach this component, the, the L bracket from this uh, side structure and the sheet from this side structure. So I think not happy about it, but I think the majority of these rivets do need to come out. Uh, but luckily, this sheet that bends around the front does not need to be removed, and it hasn't been riveted uh, by the factory yet. So, um, so all these rivets, the bottom rivets, and the rivets from here to here are the important ones. Uh, then removing the rivets that attach this bracket to this rib or seat rib on each side and I think that should be fine. Uh, I'll find out a little bit more as I get into it but it's it's a little intimidating but it also looks fairly simple. Uh, I'm going to look at it a few different ways, come up with a uh, write out a, a procedure as to what I think should be done first and what's important, what's not important, because there's some of the holes that I can drill and uh, it's not going to make a difference if I spin a rivet or if I oversize it because the parts aren't going to be reused. But with the parts that are going to be reused, I need to pay close attention not to, uh, to make any drastic changes. So... Overall, I'm happy. Uh, Sonics got back to me quick as could be. Uh, first thing, their time on Monday, Carrie responded to me. I responded back. We had uh, conversations, I think, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, I had a parts list and everything by Thursday. Already talked to... Uh, 
uh, sales there. They're adding those components to the rest of the items that I need. Uh, the grand total for everything that I need to replace the work that had already been done on the ailerons, the flaps and the stabilators is going to run me roughly $2,000, so just under $2,000 with freight. Freight is ridiculous right now because some of these components are so big and so long that uh, they're going to have to uh, uh, ship via freight, I believe. Um, I, I don't know if they will... I don't know if they're going to be UPS or whatever, but I think freight was probably almost $300 uh, because of the, 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 the oversized packages, uh, if it's coming UPS or whether it's coming on a freight truck. I'm not sure yet. But there's kind of good news on that front, I'm hoping. I, I don't want to jinx myself. You know, fingers are crossed. But uh, my last conversation with sales was they just needed to requote the freight and charge my card and ship it. Now they didn't say whether they were going to be shipping some of my components, these components, or all of my components, uh, and I didn't think to ask for clarification on that. So I, there may be a small chance I'm getting everything or most everything I need relatively soon and I can get back on this project uh, hot and heavy and start to make some real progress. So that's it. That's the uh, the quick update on the uh, wrong fuselage debacle. So I I'm happy with the end result. Um, you know, Sonics got back to me as quick as they could. They were as friendly, polite as they could. They gave me a hell of a discount on the products. They're going to try and get them out as quick as humanly possible. Uh, considering this day and age and the way we're waiting on everything. I can't ask for much more. Uh, I appreciate uh, Carrie and Chris and Mark and Heather and everybody up there at Sonics. Um, they're a great group to work with. I mean, it's a it's a family style run business that is. Uh, I think they really care about the customers, and that is awesome. You don't find that a lot. It's, it's not just other oh, camera just fell. <laughs> So anyways, if you like what I'm doing here, uh, please remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up button, uh, the little notification bell when you subscribe so you know when a new uh, video is popping up, and share these videos with your friends. Thanks for watching.